Newest members of the Penn family, please join me in the spirit of prayer for our invocation. This year has been so difficult. Many of us have had loved ones become ill or worse, or had family members lose jobs, or have felt the sting of racism and racist violence. And while not a matter of life or death, it's still disappointing. Most of you didn't get to have a proper graduation. And this isn't how we had hoped your new student orientation would go. 2020 has been hard, very hard. But perhaps, prayerfully, we're about to begin a new chapter. Life presents us these liminal moments where we find ourselves standing in the threshold on the cusp of something new. We look back and celebrate or grieve what was left behind. We look forward perhaps with some trepidation, to what awaits us. I give thanks for the class of 2024 who are in one of these liminal in-between moments in their academic careers and in their lives. May this class bravely process through the gates that stand before them for their personal transitions here at Penn, academically, socially, with student activities, athletically, and more but it seems that we're in a transition season as a world too. May these students help all of us cross over into the new as well. To envision what a post-COVID society could and should look like. May they help us turn the page on racism and all forms of hate. And during their season here at the University of Pennsylvania, may they know that they are not alone, that the entire faculty, staff and administration are here to journey with them into the new, but we also need them to help us take steps forward too. Be their strength, protect them, give them wisdom, joy amidst the weight of the moment, a steadfast peace, and love enough to push back on hate and fear. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Howard. Class of 2024 and incoming transfer students, as your Dean of Admissions, I am most proud to welcome you into the Penn community on behalf of the entire team in Penn Admissions and our academic and university life colleagues across campus. You engage with the broader Penn community and with each other through virtual Quaker Days events and have continued to build bonds through pre-orientation and new student orientation. You are ready to take the next steps to truly thrive at Penn. Your individual voices resonated through your own essays, supportive letters from your teachers and counselors, and through your conversations with volunteers of the Penn Alumni Interview Program. And yes, you achieved at the highest levels in the classroom and in the broader communities in your own cities and towns around the globe. In fact, 83% of the admitted class engaged in civic and community outreach while attending secondary school. 
the highest single form of co- or extracurricular participation and leadership by far. The desire and ability to find one's voice and to purposefully reach beyond yourself to help others are great qualities to possess. But that is only the start. Now we need this collection of 2,500 voices to truly learn from one another by challenging some of your own assumptions, to hear another point of view, to find understanding out of disagreement. I challenge all of you to think critically and to strengthen the experience of the entire Penn, Philadelphia, and the other communities which you will touch now and in the future. Dr. Gutman, 11 years ago, I first handed a Penn Relays baton into your caring hands. And now I pass over to you, the class of 2024 and transfer students, as we start a new academic year. Thank you, Dean Ferda. Wait, too soon. Perfect. The baton has been passed. Let's get started with convocation. Anything is possible with amazing Quakers like Dean Ferda on your team. His latest and greatest accomplishment is all of you. Welcome, great class of 2024 and transfer students. Your time at Penn comes at the most pivotal moment in your lifetime and ours. We won't downplay the challenges of this pandemic, but we are extremely optimistic for the future. I can't wait to welcome you to campus. Right now, your class embarks on something never before attempted. There will be setbacks, yes. More remarkably, there will be great opportunities to do things differently, more creatively. This moment cries out for mission-driven grit and a united community. Yours will be the class defined by both, and you will be in great company. Each year, some Penn seniors win our President's Engagement Prizes for their world-changing projects. Early last spring, Brendan Taliaferro seized the prize for a program where volunteers would provide shelter for local homeless gay and transgender youth. COVID struck just before Brendan's project was about to launch. Suddenly, the effort appeared doomed. Grit and community are the hallmarks of a Penn education. So Brendan pivoted with his team's support. They're now partnering with local youth shelters and restaurants to get hot meals to young people in need. It's a model of community caring that can be adopted wildly. And it began in a historic pandemic. So too begins your Penn education. Its contours will be defined by mission-driven grit and a united community. Grit and community can alter history. We just saw this last month when the world lost Congressman John Lewis. A champion of the civil rights movement, John was the youngest speaker at the March on Washington. He lifted his voice for justice, for black Americans, for the precious right to vote, for the beloved community. Decades later, he summed it all up like this. If you come together with a mission, grounded with love and a sense of community, you can make the impossible possible. In 2012, Congressman Lewis joined our Penn family, now your family, as an honorary degree recipient. We honor his example. We learn from it. Determined in his devotion to mission and community, John moved a president and a nation. He inspired millions to embrace the better angels of our nature. He fought to enshrine the equal right to vote. As we reaffirm, yes, Black Lives Matter, as we confront this pandemic, these shiny examples call out to us. Stick to your mission. Stand with your beloved community. I know times seem dim right now. I know how that feels. I was a first year like you when Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated. Devoted to civil rights, I was horrified, devastated. The Vietnam War tore at our social fabric. Times felt dire then, too. But as John Lewis would say, this is not the time to dwell on setbacks. This is the time to step up. This is the time to unite together. This year, especially with the historic election, you possess real power to step up, 
to the essential democratic right and responsibility to vote, the vote is the most powerful nonviolent change agent you have in a democratic society. John Lewis wrote in its final words to us, you must use it because it is not guaranteed. As we mark the 100th anniversary of the women's right to vote in the United States, I recall vividly going with my mom to the voting booth. Her mom, my bubba, holding me here, was an immigrant. She was the very first woman in my family to vote. I take tremendous pride in Penn Leads the Vote, our student leaders who get the vote out, and the civic engagement of all Penn students. Together, we are a long, proud, unbowed line of citizens, all united for a common mission. All the more so in this time of COVID, I urge you to take your place among them. Vote. Marching forward together with mission-driven grit, a community united, your Penn family can and will make the impossible possible. You now march with us. With Penn purpose and pride, we couldn't be happier or more excited that you're here. Welcome to your moment. Welcome to Penn. Now we will hear from our wonderful provost, Wendell Pritchett. Good evening. As provost, Penn's chief academic officer, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the Penn community. Typically, I might have said campus, but this year is anything and everything but typical. Wherever you are, know that you are a critical and valued member of our community. And what will this year look like for the Penn community? If I told you I knew, I'd be lying. And you wouldn't believe me anyway. Things are and will be different. Unpredictable seems fitting. What I want to share with you tonight is not predictions or even guesses about the next few months. It's some thoughts about where we are as a university, as a nation, and how in the years to come, your Penn experience can help us move forward. This has been a tumultuous, upsetting, and at moments inspiring period for this country, and for people of color in particular. Our inequalities have been laid bare, often on video, including the outsized impact COVID continues to have on black and brown people. Millions of people carry the weight of injustice. Penn, too, is not immune from racism and has historical ties to slavery and discredited medical practices like eugenics. We feel that weight. Without acknowledging and examining our difficult past, we cannot move beyond it. As co-chair of the Penn Slavery Project, an initiative started by students, this is an endeavor that I take very seriously and one I encourage you to explore while you're here. Equally important, we're examining our present, our statues and icons, our policing policy, and our naming conventions. We've been exploring issues of inequality through our campaign for community, and this year we'll even place greater focus on them through many efforts, including our year of community engagement. Penn is not perfect, but our community strives to be better. Like Penn, our country can only make progress by understanding how and why we've arrived at this point. You've worked incredibly hard to get here and are now among the fortunate few attending one of the world's greatest universities, regardless of where you're sitting. It's up to you and young people like you, no matter what they look like or where they come from, to push our nation forward and to support one another on that journey. How can a Penn education help you do that? First, you'll make intellectual and social connections here that will serve you well. The pandemic may mean it will take longer to build those ties, but I promise you it will happen and these ties will last forever. Second, the exposure to different viewpoints will shape your ideas, interests, and priorities, and the knowledge and insight you gain will be foundational to your future success. For a moment, I'd like to dwell on that word. What do we mean by success? The last six months have reminded us of something we always know, that individual achievement, while laudable, is not nearly enough. Darren Walker, president of the Ford Foundation, and someone who, by his own admission, began life in the bottom 1% and worked his way to the very top, noted recently that, no chief executive, investor, or rich person wakes up in the morning, looks in the mirror, and says, today I want to go out and create more inequality in America. And yet, all too often, that is exactly what happens. It's not enough just to do well in America. We all must do the hard work of battling racism, injustice, and inequality, of healing our word. I hope and I know you will do the heavy lifting that your good fortune demands. You will lead in word and deed. Real leadership, true leadership, means taking people where they may be reluctant to go because it's right and because it's just. And you'll do this work not because it's easy, but because it's very, very difficult. 
I urge you to envision how success looks not just for you, but for all members of our community and our country. Are we at a tipping point? I hope we are. I believe we are poised for something greater, and I know you will lift us and lead us forward. Members of the class of 2024, welcome to Penn. Penn is a place where you get to meet students from all over the world with differing backgrounds, interests, and hobbies, and really make it your home. The most surprising thing about Penn is all the different kinds of talented people you get to meet. Penn is a place where you are constantly inspired by your peers. Most Penn students are ambitious, driven, kind, passionate, and willing to learn. The single most important piece of advice I can give you is this. Find something you're passionate about at Penn and pursue that. Do not be afraid to experiment and try new things, especially in regards to extracurriculars and academics. There are so many ways to engage with knowledge outside of the classroom. These are the moments that truly define the Penn experience. Do an activity that really doesn't necessarily align with your academic interests, because learning comes in and outside of the classroom. Just make sure that you make time to explore the different things that Penn has to offer because you never know where it might lead you. Philadelphia is part of what makes Penn so great and exploring that community is one of the best ways, I think, to get the most out of your Penn experience. Penn is a place where you find yourself. Don't be afraid to ask for help and offer help to those in need. I think you can get the most out of your Penn experience by pursuing something that you love and not conforming to what everyone else is doing. What makes Penn special is its community of students who are proud to stand up for what they believe in. The most surprising thing about Penn is that there is a community, a place, a club, a home for everyone. And the most important thing to remember here at Penn is to stay true to what makes you passionate and that going against the norm is just as cool as staying with it. Before you graduate Penn, you have to throw toast in a football game. You will generally see a change in yourself between your first year and your last year. I always say it's not a place where you leave the same way you came. The most important thing to remember here at Penn is that you made it so far and you're going to make it all the way. So just trust yourself, trust the process, and you got it. The biggest piece of advice I'd have for incoming first years at Penn is to have a sense of how to stay true to yourself while also being open-minded to the new people and experiences that you'll face at Penn. Focus on doing things that you always wanted to do and things you find interesting and don't feel pressured by things that other people around you were doing. I wish somebody told me whenever I was an incoming freshman at Penn that my freshman fall GPA would not define me. Remain undeclared as long as you can. There is no rush. So be generous with yourself and take your time to find your academic interests and your larger goals. Don't bite off more than you can chew. It's a marathon, not a sprint. The most surprising thing about Penn is just the sheer amount of possibilities the most important thing to remember here at Penn is that you deserve to be here. I want to give a huge welcome to the class of 2024. We're all so excited to see what the next few years have in store for you. Welcome to Penn. The next four years are completely what you make of them, so be proactive and chase what you want. Welcome class of 2024. Congratulations class of 2024. Welcome to Penn and go Quakers. Welcome to Penn and good luck this year. The sophomore class welcomes the class of 2024 to the University of Pennsylvania. The junior class welcomes you, the class of 2024, to the University of Pennsylvania. The senior class welcomes all of you to the University of Pennsylvania. Dr. Gutman, I'm pleased to present to you the class of 24 flag. Thank you, Derek, Sam, and Lizzie for your thoughts in transmitting the flag of the great class of 2024. It now joins the flags of previous classes at official university events and future alumni celebrations. With the presentation of the class of 2024 flag complete, it is now my honor and my privilege to officially declare the start of the 281st year of the University of Pennsylvania. I want to thank all of the participants who joined us today with a particular shout out to the Penn Band, Glee Club, the Inspiration, Penn Sirens, and the Shabbatones, who will now lead us in singing the Penn Anthem, the red and blue. This is a very special Penn tradition that we normally do all together. 
I assure you that opportunity will come again soon, so it's best to start learning the words today. Wherever you are, join in and sing along.